Hey guys, welcome to the Indie Files. We're looking at Fadag, Tales of the Grieving Madness. I love the music already, so let's hop on in. Mods! The Haunter of the Dark. Mods now available. Well, let's see the actual base game. Let's see, The Dreaming Eye. A small cult dedicated to the waking of the Great Dreamer. When the dark moon rises, the temple of the great dreamer will rise once more from the ocean floor, and their time will be at hand. All right, let's do this. Let's see, cult select, let's see. Let's go with that one. So we've been doing a lot of Cthulhu style and, well, Lovecraftian, I guess, the technical term style games. Let's see. Welcome to Fatang. You have six rounds to prepare for the ritual. To pass the ritual, you need to successfully complete a roll. Click the card icon to see all the possible rolls. You'll be able to select these rolls at the end of the game. Each roll has a major and a minor stat requirement. You need to pass both to successfully complete the roll. Look at the card picture and prophecy text to gain clues. The ritual feedback at the end of the game will give you more clues. Okay, so let's see, Elder Signs and Stats. Elder Signs are used, okay, this is going to be a lot of reading for me, so let's learn. Story events. Each story has five parts, which you can follow by unlocking at the diamonds at the bottom of the text area. White diamonds are indicating your progress. Okay, I think I can get this. Multiple characters. The characters with the highest influence stat will always play first. If there is a draw, the characters will play in sequence that you chose. All right. So there is a lot we're going to be doing here. A witch's hut. A witch's hut, let's see. Monsters hunt or dark meditation. Or hunt monsters or dark meditation. Let's try to hunt. As your consequence. As your consciousness floats through the current of the depths, your body is racked by the dark energy coursing through you. As your mind returns to your body, you release that not all. You realize that not all of it is present. Gain one magic and one body, but lose one sanity. An entire morning of chanting has made you thirsty, and you strolled over to the communal water fountain for a much needed drink. Some of the other adepts had already gathered around the fountain, and as you approach them, they give you the here comes the new guy once over. People say you should take it slow when you first join an office, an office cult, an office culture, but your philosophy has always been to go big. You could make up a story about fighting a Rakasha, Rakashas, should make them too afraid to try anything against you in the future. Alternatively, you could make up a story about stealing a Teratarun egg. The process requires a very tricky spell, which you have no idea how to perform, but there's no way that any of the other adepts will know it. So you can just make stuff up. Take a deep breath and tell them about that time you wrestled a Rakshasa. Or stole a Terra Tarn egg. Huh. You shot it boastfully. This reminds me of the time I wrestled the mighty Rakshasa. You stand next to the most fragile looking cultist in the group and slap him hard against the back. As he topples over, you grab him by the scruff and shake him around energetically while you tell the group about your brawl. First, I use the sleeper hold, you explain enthusiastically, your biceps curling around the poor fellow's neck. As the beast begged for its life, I used my signature double knee breaker move. The little man's eyes bulged as you lift him above your head with a triumphant roar. There was a tiny yelp. You smashed his body over your extended knee. Don't kill the man. After your dramatic performance, you help the dazed fellow to his feet and give him a good-natured noogie. Impressed by your obvious physical strength, your colleagues walk away making a mental note never to pick a fight with you. Game to influence. Yay! That's going to bite us in the booty. Watch. Cycle two. 
Okay, so we can pick where we go. That's cool. I thought we had to go in an order. Let's see, Madam Fufu's Downtown Magic Shop, Arkham's Sanatorium, The Church of Starry Wisdom, Town Hall, or Miskatonic University. I want to see Madame Frufru's. Madame Frufru's gamble or play in the band. You decide to take a break from it all. You spend the evening regula regaling patrons with your soulful yet slightly disturbing tunes. To gain two performance and one sanity. Woo! -hoo! It took a while, but you had managed to convert a couple of call girls to your cause. At your instruction, they have lured their clients into the special room at the back of the ma of Madame Frufru's. There, your goons would knock them out, only for them to wake up as blessed sacrifices. Unfortunately, your little operation had not gone unnoticed. Now you find yourself in a little interrogation room with the detective asking some prying questions. Recall some details from the victim's feigned ignorance. Hmm. Let's see. You can't think of any information which would be helpful in this situation. Spend a couple of days in jail while interrogations take place. You decide that prison is actually a scary place and jump some iron to make sure you can defend yourself. Gain one body. The Council of Elders finally decides to send a cult lawyer to get you out. Oh, gee, we're part of Scientel. Okay, moving on. Oh, that was not good. Cycle three. Let's go to Miskatonic University. Delve through tomes, go on an expedition. Hmm. You convince the university faculty to send you on an expedition. You push your body to its limits, searching for the lost artifacts and forbidden knowledge. Game one body, one knowledge, and one magic. Your studies have drawn you to the un... Unexpected... Okay, Colton by Frederick von Kuntz. Juntz. Why did I use a K? Oh, with the book open in front of you, you cannot decide which passage to read first. The passage about the deep ones could be useful, but it's in German. Alternatively, there was a section about a lone Siberian which might contain some magical references. Fortunately, the chapter has some English and annotations, which greatly helps with your understanding. Ooh, one knowledge. You note a passage in a curious cursive scripture script and start reading it. As you keep on reading, uncontrolled sparks of flames appear all over the library and quickly consume entire bookcases. Since you don't know enough... Since... since oh, okay. Let me go back. All right. Smelling smoke, you finally look up to see the carnage you have caused. Well, no one is going to miss these books then, you muse as you grab a couple of grimoires and rush out of the library. Gain one knowledge and do magic. Fail. No, that wasn't a failure. <laughs> it was a slight failure, okay? Let's try going to the cult of the star wisdom. Let's see. Indoctrination or organize a bake sale. Putting on your best fake smile, you convince the helpless to join your cause. Ooh, one performance and two influence. Usually, if you start a conversation with, Hey, would you like to join our cult of ancient, technical, tentacled, alien-worshipping madmen? You get a rude answer. True, it used to be the cult's main marketing pitch during the 17th century, but that led to the Salem witch trials and widespread layoffs in the marketing department. <laughs> I love this game so far. No, these days you start small. You start with, hey, do you know that you could have eternal life and wi er, eternal life with a nearly unlimited supply of heresy bar of Hershey's bars if you only let us hook you up to this machine and cleanse your aura? I know what you're making a reference to. I love you guys. Then after a couple of sessions, you explain to them that the world was once ruled by tentacle aliens and by praying you, paying you a couple of thousand dollars, you can nearly guarantee that they will never show up again. Then, after they were bankrupt, you just explain to them that serving, sl that serving slavering, slaver, slavering? Yes, yeah, slavering, mon 
monstrosities from another dimension could actually be quite satisfying. And so you progress them through the circles till they, till they either earn their keep or end up on the chopping block. Quite simple, actually. Only, only catch was that you desperately needed a new gimmick to convince people to join the first circle. Develop a new process. Make up an interesting... Mm, develop a new process. You had set up you had set up all night trying to come up with a plan. At about four in the morning, after several cups of coffee and no substantial idea, you settle on a new clothespin cleansing technique. Blurry eyed, you tested the technique on yourself. The basic premise was that you would see how many clothespins you could attach to your ears, lips, nose on various other skin folds. If you managed not to pass out from pain, you'd be deemed worthy of, internal, of an <laughs> eternal life. After passing out several times, you decide the technique would probably not be perceived well. At least you improved your pain threshold. Oh, we're not doing very good today. Our character's trying, though. Darn it, we got a little bit of cult members. So let's see. Where should we go next? I like these kind of games, honestly. Let's try Arkham. Experiment on patience. Check in. In a dark, secret corner of the asylum, you perform occult and scientific experiments on patients forgotten by society. You make great star strides in your understanding of the occult, but it takes a serious toll on your sanity. <clears throat> Darn. One night, you were scoring the graveyard for body parts when suddenly a bunch of malicious ghosts started to materialize from the open graves. Fortunately, you had brought along a mystical ruined trumpet. <laughs> trumpet? Which might calm them down if you could play it with a damn. If you're not that confident in your music ability, you could always just try to, br to banish them. Well, hmm. Let's see. Let's see. We're three on that. Subterfuge. Wisdom Intelligence. Where was the music one? We're not good with riches. Let's try playing the rune trumpet. The runes on the trumpet start to glow, but your blaring only seems to infuriate the spirits. Apparently not even the dead are, t as, are as tone deaf as you. As you turn to run, you fall into an open grave. Lose one sanity. Next morning you wake up with one hell of a headache. But as you try to get out of the grave, you notice a jeweled necklace sticking out of the casket. Grain one witches. Well, we got some riches out of it. Hmm. Magic shop. Let's see, man, man the shop, cast the spells. You operate the shop front, buying powerful artifacts and selling some love potions and minor trinkets. Spirits. You'd think being dead would make you less of a prick. Well, you'd be wrong. You had tracked down the location of the hidden temple of Valo Valrock. Well, you kind of had an idea about the vicinity, but had struggled to narrow it down. Having almost given up hope, you read in the papers of a tragic massacre at a railroad construction camp. To a man, they had all died under weird circumstances. Looking closer, you realize that this particular group had been constructing a tunnel in the mountains, where you were pretty sure the Temple of Valrock was located. Closing shop early, you headed to the site of the massacre as quickly as you could, and performed a seance, hoping that one of the spirits could shed some more light on the location of the temple. That's when Barton Munch arrived. In life, he was nasty, Cross. He was a nasty cross man, crass man who would sooner punch you in the face than give you the time of day. In death, he was a nasty crass spirit who'd punch you in the face, punch your face in, and then give you the time of day. At least he had matured slightly in death. As the aggressive spirit materialized, he immediately started com commentating about your heritage and your possible relation to animals of the Sude. Sude family. Noticing that he didn't bother you, he noticed that this didn't bother you. He rushed for an attack. Excuse me, attack. 
This wasn't your first rodeo, and you had already set up protection wards. After an hour of Barton bashing at your wards and, ca and cursing, you finally realized he wasn't going to let up. You needed a new plan. Put up your dukes. Psychoanalyzes aggression. Let's see. Persuasion is three. Strength is four. Hmm. So we both have those pretty high. So we could fight him. But let's try psychoanalyzing. So Barton, tell me how you feel, you started. Barton stopped mid-punch, looking quite confused. Da-da. da I said, managing to look even more confused. I hear you and I understand, you said empathetically. Okay, the ghost said, not quite sure where you're going with this. But how does being dead make you feel, you carried on. Barton floated down to a rock and pondered your question. His deep introspecti introspection causing ectoplasmic tears to well up in his eyes. One hour later... And I, I only wanted him to be proud of me. Martin sobbed. I'm afraid that's all we. Or that's I'm, I'm afraid. I'm afraid that's all we have time for, Barton. You told the crying ghost as the sand ran out of your little hourglass. Barton nodded his head and gave you a hug, then floated back to the ground. You started. You stared at the mound of ectoplasm Barton had left behind. Still had no clue as to the location of the temple, but with all the ectoplasm, you'll be rolling in potions for a while. Do magic! Woohoo! We pass! So I like this kind of game. It's actually really cute. Ta it is time! Let's see. Conjunction of Albacloth. Blood of Kachpehdasha. Ablisk of Matathia. Hateful screech of Yor, Jade of Gong, Jade Gong, Jade of Gong, good. Maltese cock cockerel, <laughs> FBI infiltrator, vigilant. Hmm, I could probably be an infiltrator. What's my persuasion? Okay, magic would be my highest thing. My persuasion would be three, so that's actually pretty low. So, hmm. See if I've got my magic that eye. Finally, let crow. Let's see. Oh, you can see. You can read each one. Let's see. After a hundred thousand years of conjunction of Albokef, visible only to the mad astronomer, we're once more dark in the sky. At the appointed time, the scribe must read the inscription off the obelisk of Martoth. He alone may carry the blessed tome to the most holy temple. Let's see, I've got that, which is magic, artifacts, abilities, your ability to cast or use magical artifacts. Let's try the next one. Blood of Kepet Dijo. The sorcerer will be, will be, will, the sorcerer will buy his own hand slay Kepet Dijo and bore his steaming black blood into the pit of despair. Through the hateful speech of Ur, the blessed shouter's screams will awaken the ancient dreamer. I don't think I'm definitely there. In, accompani in, accomp in accompaniment, strike the jade stone gong, its magical resonance, adding cadence to the ceremony. Let's see, what does the cock do? Finally, let the crow, let crow the gem-studded Maltese cockatrill, cockareel. What the hell's a cockareel? Let its crow sound the doom of the world. For your doom will be the form of the wolf in sheep's clothing. Beware. Heed the, these warnings. Be prepared for the intruder and the craven traitor. Hmm. I'm gonna go with... This one, maybe? Let's see. The Reckoning. Truth be told, you only learned this week... You only learned this week that stars were actually suns. You excitedly went to tell the other cultists, but they just stared at you. You started laughing, pretending it was a joke, and defusing a potentially disastrous situation. You remember poor Melvin. He was supposed to sing the litany of, of dire portents. 
When the others found out he couldn't sing where the damn he was decapitated and his skull reanimated to do the job instead. You shiver a bit as you stroke your neck absentmindedly. Here goes. It has started, you bluff, hoping no one notices the tremble in your voice. <laughs> Magic fails! Oh, we were defeated! The ritual quiets down and all eyes turn to the immense carved door nestled in the side of the temple. It's Squid Dragon, Bass Relief. Bass Relief? Okay. Glistens wet in the moonlight. After 15 minutes of waiting, a dreaded re realization started to gnaw into your mind. After an hour, only the ones too stubborn to admit defeat were still left on the island. As the moon set behind the waves, only ones who could not deal with the horrors of what they had done, for seemingly no gain, were still on the island as it started, as again it started to sink beneath the waves. In the end, since people would believe just about anything if you told them it was in the stars, you started writing an astrology column in the Arkham Times. At one point, it started bothering you that people based their entire lives on, oops, and on what you said the stars foretold, but then you realized it was no less evil than being part of a world-destroying cult. At least I was a participant. Let's look at the mods really quick. So, you want to install your first mod. When we don't have any mods, we'll have to look some up. So if you guys like this game and you want to see more of it, let me know and we may do some more of this for the weekends. I do like this game. If you want to pick it up, it is on Steam. It's called Fadong, The Tales of the Creeping Madness. Let's see. Dark Young Expansion. The Ancient Ones. More stories. New ritual items. So there's a lot being added to this game constantly. Personally, I like it. I do like that we have some mods, so hopefully we'll be looking into those eventually. Thank you guys for joining me for the Indie Files. Check out all those links in the description check out our merch store for christmas check out our comic book you can get a digital copy of it right now on sale for 199 so go grab it before it jumps up in price thank you guys for joining us love you all bye everyone